So when you heard that, what was your response? Whoopi was right. I felt awful, to be honest. Whoopi was right. Um, I'm guilty of having gotten into the fun of where's Kate and sort of... What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the Behavioral Lights. My name is Spidey, and I use my degree in sociology and psychology, my certifications in criminal interrogation and body language analysis, and over 10 years' experience as an award-winning mentalist to teach people behavioral analysis and practical psychology on stages and television shows all over the world. The hosts of the Emmy-winning daytime talk show The View landed in a bit of hot water recently and publicly apologized following an episode where they shared some differing opinions about Princess Catherine. But what do their body language, facial expressions, and word choice reveal? And are some of them a little more sincere than others? Let's dive right in. I'm really excited about this week's analysis for a couple of reasons, and we'll talk about those soon. But before we look at clips of this apology, let's go over the sequence of events really quickly in a nutshell. So a couple of weeks ago, when the world hadn't heard from Princess Catherine for a while, The View did an episode where they discussed some of the theories. And most of the hostesses were bouncing some theories around and giving in to speculating as to what's going on. And one of them, Whoopi Goldberg, seemed to be putting her foot down and saying that she didn't want to participate in this kind of theorizing or gossiping. No, no, it's our fault. It's our fault because we bought into this. When you buy into this stuff, when they start doing it to your family or they start doing it to your kids, it's not cute. It's not fun and it really irritates me. I'm going to put this out because you're going to get hammered for this. It's true. I'm, yes, I'm just going to say it. This is all speculation and we're having fun, okay? <laughs> just know that we know that we don't know. At the time, the response to that episode was very polarized. A lot of people thought that they have no business entertaining these theories and should just let it be. And then a whole bunch of other people said, no, it's totally fine for them to talk about what could be happening and that Whoopi Goldberg was the one who was out of line for trying to tell them to not talk about that. Fast forward to just last week, after the tragic news of Princess Catherine's diagnosis and treatment, the hosts of The View did an episode where they addressed the conversation they were having and in some cases apologized for some of the things they said. In this video, we're gonna look at their nonverbal communication individually to see what it tells us about how they really feel or what they're really thinking about this whole topic. But before we do, there are a couple of things that are really, really important to keep in mind. First and foremost, and I cannot stress this enough, this video is not about whether they should be apologizing or not. I know there are a lot of different opinions out there. Some people think, yeah, they should apologize. It was a little out of line. Others are saying, why should they apologize? They're allowed to talk about that. It's really not about that. I only look at nonverbal communication to try to figure out what might be going on in an apology that they decided to issue whether each of us believes that they should have or not. Second thing, as important as the first, this is not an analysis of Princess Catherine's video. We talked about this in a community post. I will not be analyzing that video for a bunch of reasons. This is an analysis of an apology. It is the public position of these women that that conversation shouldn't have happened and they are taking it back once again whether we agree with them or not. This is only about the apology. The last thing I want to say before we look at these clips is that this is a really exciting analysis for me because besides Whoopi Goldberg, who I watched as an actress when I was a kid, I'm not really familiar with any of these women. I don't really know what they stand for. I don't really watch the show. I've seen clips here and there. So if at any point you feel like there's some bias towards someone, like I'm attacking or defending because I like or dislike them, I literally have no idea who they are. I watch other clips of them to have a chance to baseline them a little bit. But outside of that, I have no opinions about any of these individuals. So when you heard that, what was your response? Whoopi was right. I felt awful, to be honest. Whoopi was right. Um, I'm guilty of having gotten into the fun of where's Kate and sort of thinking it's funny and sharing the memes and um, playing into that. And I forgot something fundamental that we all know, which is every person, whether they're a princess, somebody in a high privileged position, or just the person next to you is dealing with personal struggles that we don't know about. Okay, so what I love about this analysis is that in the first five seconds of this video, if you focus on each individual and look at their nonverbal communication, you could tell exactly how this apology video is gonna go, and you could tell right from those five seconds, more or less, where each individual stands. Who's gonna be the most apologetic? Who's gonna be the most resistant? Who's gonna be leading the conversation? You could tell pretty much everything. So let's try that. For those of you who haven't seen the rest of the interview, I'm gonna play those first five seconds three times in a row. And you might wanna go back and watch it a second time, 
and try to focus on each individual. Just look at their nonverbal communication, look at who's jumping in first, who's talking, what you're feeling, because everything you need to know is already being communicated in those first five seconds. So when you heard that, what was your response? Whoopi was right. I felt awful, to be honest. Whoopi was right. Um, so when you heard that, what was your response? Whoopi was right. I felt awful, to be honest. Whoopi was right. Um, what was your response? Whoopi was right. I felt awful, to be honest. Whoopi was right. Um, okay, great. So before we go on, pause the video really quick, go down to the comments and give me your first impressions just based on what you saw right there. And you might know them by name or you can describe them, but tell me who you think is gonna be the most apologetic here, who's gonna be resistant, who's gonna be in the middle, what are you getting from each individual? And it's crazy how many of you are gonna get this whole thing right based on a couple of seconds. Okay, so first off, we have Whoopi Goldberg. Now let's keep in mind that in the initial conversation, she's the one who did not want to participate in these theories. In fact, she said how it's been done to her before and she just doesn't want to be part of this kind of conversation and she tried to shut it down at that point. So she's starting with, when you heard that, what was your response? And this has the vibe of a parent telling a child, so what do you have to say for yourself, right? She's not in any way giving her opinion on this because she didn't participate in that conversation, so she wants to know what they have to say for themselves. The first to respond to her question is Anna. She's the one sitting right in the middle. And in a loud, very clear tone, she says, Whoopi was right. And there's a lot of confidence in her voice, but if we look at her body language, this is someone who, by the way, is usually very animated. She uses a lot of what we call illustrators. These are hand gestures and head gestures that illustrate what we're saying. And we're about to see clips of her, and I've seen other clips of her, where she's very animated. But in this case, both her arms are very close to her body, and her left arm is under the table, and her right hand is up like this, and we can even see what we call pacifiers or adapters. These are typically repetitive gestures that we see in people when they're trying to reduce stress. So this might mean that this topic is a little bit stressful. You'll also notice that throughout this statement, she's looking down. And again, this is someone who comes to life when she articulates, but in this case, she's looking down and after a statement, she looks up to Whoopi and then looks over to Alyssa who starts to talk and nods along in agreement. Now, what's really interesting about Anna is that in that original discussion that they had, the one that create a lot of controversy, she wasn't there. Joy was there that day in her seat. So we didn't see her participate in that conversation. Now nonverbal communication can give us clues as to how someone's feeling, but not necessarily why. In this case, there are two very good reasons why she might have this more of a closed off body language with the gaze looking downwards. One could be that even if she wasn't part of that specific conversation, she had conversations like that one with her friends on social media. So she is feeling a little defensive or a little guilty about having participated in that type of conversation. The second possibility is that she's about to make a very bold statement. Whoopi was right. In other words, she's telling three of her colleagues, you guys were wrong. So this could very well be a defensiveness associated to her taking a very firm position and saying she was right, you guys shouldn't have discussed that. So this looking down and this kind of pacifying is her thinking about the confrontation that might come out from her telling her three colleagues, you were wrong. Then we have Sarah Haynes. She's the one in yellow. She's sitting in her chair straight up. She has one arm across her abdomen, gripping her other arm. We'll come back to that in a second. And she doesn't say anything, but after Anna speaks, we have Alyssa who jumps in and says she feels awful and Whoopi was right. And we just kind of see her nodding along in agreement. In the international bestseller, The Definitive Book of Body Language, Barbara and Alan Pease, who are two of the global masters of nonverbal communication, talk about this arm across the abdomen gripping the other arm. Now, they're certainly not the only ones who talk about this position. There's a lot of agreement on this in behavioral analysis. And typically this kind of position suggests defensiveness because the arm is coming across and blocking a part of our body that is very vulnerable. Because we're one of the only species on this planet where our vital organs are exposed, we get quite defensive of them when we feel vulnerable. Now this comes with a massive warning. When Whoopi addresses her co-hosts, the camera goes wide and we already see Sarah in that position. I have no way of knowing when she went into that position. All the way in the beginning of the interview, we see her hands on the table, she's moving some stuff around, but then we don't see them for a very long time, and then we just see her in that position. It could have happened at any point, and it could simply be the way she's sitting comfortably. Especially because of the way the angle is set up, I can't see how tight 
that hand is gripping. Like if I saw her fingers really clenching there, I might think something's going on, but this could just be her sitting in a position that's comfortable to her. So remember, change is a lot more important than position. So if somebody had said something like, yeah, Sarah's really the one who started this, and all of a sudden we see her hand go there, and maybe at the same time those shoulders come up and the head go down, then we can associate a lot more meaning to that gesture than just a stagnant her sitting there like that. Could it be defensive? Yes. Could it be comfort? Yeah. And then we have Sunny. She's the second one from the right. And notice how she's sitting straight up in her chair, chin up like this, and arms are close in. Hands, it's hard to tell, given what she's wearing and the pattern on it, it seems like her hands are together under the table, but I'm not 100% sure about that. But notice how she's barely moving. So Whoopi asks the question, Anna jumps in with a statement, Alyssa jumps in and agrees with that, Sarah is nodding along, but Sunny is sitting there and we're getting nothing. She's not even turning to look at who's talking. She's sitting there like this, straight up. We're not even so much as seeing a bit of a nod when Alyssa says, Whoopi was right, I feel awful. Nothing. Now to be fair, she often sits there just facing forward as the other ones are talking. However, in the previous conversation, the one they're apologizing about, when Alyssa made a point she agreed with, she turned her attention to her and then even vocally and physically agreed with what she was saying. Hello. Not to make it heavy, but like we know the treatment around Diana. We know what Meghan Markle and Prince Harry went yep. through. So there are cases where we see and feel her agreement, but this is certainly not one of them. The only other possibility I'll entertain is that sometimes when we're very self-conscious and don't want to draw attention to ourselves, we get very, very still. So because she knows how adamant she was about certain things that now she has to take back, she's trying to not draw attention to herself by staying very still. But even at that, there isn't even a little bit of like a subconscious nodding of agreement. There's just nothing. So the first to really speak is Alyssa. And she starts with, I feel awful, Whoopi was right. And she starts by saying, I'm guilty of having gone into the fun of Where's Kate? So a few things. First, we see her illustrators. She actually brings, when she's gonna speak, she actually brings her hands up and she starts using them to illustrate, which seems to be baseline for her from other clips that I've seen. Her hands are very often illustrating her points. But the other interesting thing is the language. She starts by saying, I'm guilty. So there's no distancing there, you know. I had a bit of fun, you know, trying to figure, or anything like that, or trying to like blame share. I'm guilty. That's a very strong statement. So just from her first few words, it seems like we're gonna get some accountability from her and a few of the others, but not everyone. So we've had just a couple of seconds here, but we already have some feelings as to how this might go, but let's go on and look at each of them individually to see how right our first impressions were. But before we do, do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button, turn those notifications on for more behavioral analysis and practical psychology content. Thinking it's funny and sharing the memes and um, playing into that, and I forgot something fundamental that we all know, which is every person, whether they're a princess, somebody in a high privileged position, or just the person next to you is dealing with personal struggles that we don't know about. I send my love to her and strength to her because sure, the palace totally mishandled the PR of this, but the public mishandled it. We didn't give her an ounce of, not we, you did, a lot of other people did. I didn't think about, there's something more serious here that she's dealing with. Okay, right in the beginning of that specific clip, we see a very interesting cluster of behaviors. As she says, that she was sharing the memes and playing into that. Her speech slows down and playing into that. And we see an eye block or a slow blink. And that's when we close our eyes for an extended period of time mid conversation. Now there's a lot of great research on slow blinking and it's been found that pretty much everywhere in the world, universally, when we close our eyes, it's to help us focus on something. It's to either try to keep a thought in, to try to remember something, for example, or to keep a thought out. Like if you get bad news, and you just, you don't wanna process that, so you try to focus on something else. It's also something we often see with shame, but again, that's, there's something that I don't wanna deal with, so I'm gonna block it out, I'm gonna focus on something else. So right there as she talks about all the things that she shared and the things she was talking about, we see that eye block as her speech slows down, then her arms come across like this, and she looks up as she continues and she says, and I forgot something important that we all know, and her, we literally hear her speech, pick up again. And sharing the memes and um, playing into that. And I forgot something fundamental that we all know, which is. And I think what happened here is quite simply, she had a list of things she wanted to say. And in her head, she said, okay, I'm gonna go from this to this to this. And here for a moment, I think, 
She forgot where she was going to go after she talked about what she did and the memes that she shared. So here for a second, we see it slow down as she focuses on it. Then the eyes go up and the eyes darting around as we try to search our memory for something isn't uncommon. So seeing the eyes go up while someone tries to retrieve something, that happens a lot. So she goes up there as her speech comes back to her and she goes, and I forgot something fundamental that we all know. And now you literally hear the speech speed up as she catches it again and keeps going. Could it be that the eye block is a bit of shame in regard to the memes that she shared and the things she talked about? It's possible, especially because those arms are coming in at the same time. But I think it's more than likely because that speech falls apart and it's in a transition moment of topics. And then the eyes come up and the speech speeds up. I think she was just thinking about, okay, where was I gonna go from here? Oh, got it. I want you to notice the reliability of her illustrators, her hand gestures, and how she's consistently placing things in like this visual space, right? So she's putting things away and then putting things together. So she says, whether you're a princess or you know somebody in a high privileged position, and as she says princess, her hand goes over here, and then she says high privileged position. And I think she's still thinking of royalty she's not thinking because it would be hard to argue that you know given her success she's not in a high privileged position but her hand is distancing like this because she's thinking of like a princess or royalty or someone really high up then she says the person next to you and again gestures away from her with both hands like this person next to you but then when she says are going through personal struggles that we don't know about the hands come together because now it's we as a community we're talking about this we don't know about the things that these people are going through. Then her hands come back together as she talks about the love and strength that she wishes her. And then notice what happens immediately after that. As she says, the palace mishandled this. Again, both hands are distancing here. That's the palace. They did something wrong. And what do we see in that moment? We see an eye block. So in that moment, this eye block, I think, could very well be like, the palace did a bunch of things that I don't want to face, I don't want to think about, I'm not on board with the things that the palace did. And then she takes the accountability and brings it right back to herself. So that was really interesting to see because some people just blame Sharon and go, well, the palace completely mishandled this. So I was just going based off the things that they were doing. But she says, yeah, the palace did this, but we're also to blame because we mishandled it as well. And then she corrects herself and we see a very reliable gesture, which is called a stop gesture. So whenever you see someone's hand up like this, shoot straight up, palm outwards, fingers extended, we call this a stop gesture or a symbol of negation. And the research has shown that once again, pretty much anywhere in the world, when a hand comes up like this, we're either trying to stop something or get someone's attention. So in this case, she's quite literally negating, stopping herself dead in her tracks and going, no, no not we, you did it. And she's excited about that. So she says, Whippy, you were on, you know, you were on it, but, and then she goes back to herself and it's not we anymore, it's I. So now she takes the accountability herself. We didn't give her an ounce of, not we, you did, a lot of other people did. I didn't think about, there's something more serious here that she's dealing with and I, I feel awful over. And so she ends with, I didn't think about, there's something serious that she's dealing with. And we see something on the face that's really interesting. As she's saying, something serious that she's dealing with, we see her squint the eyes and we see the nose crinkle just a little bit to where we see these two lines on the side of her mouth and that top lip is coming up as well. Now, go back and watch everything she set up until this point and try to see another moment where we see this kind of squinting with that scrunching to where we see these two lines. It didn't happen. There was one or two like seconds where like she was taking a breath or something and we kind of quickly see those lines but this expression with that squint and with those two lines being visible did not happen until this very moment. So whenever we see a lot of scrunching on the face, eyebrows, eyes, nose, the mouth closed with the scrunching with the lines on the side like this, this is the universal expression of disgust. Anywhere in the world, people recognize this as disgust because we're trying to shut everything down. We don't want to take in whatever this experience is. However, conversationally, we often see more mild versions of this as someone accentuates something, and it doesn't necessarily mean full-on disgust. It can, but it's often an unpleasant experience, something the person doesn't want to experience. So you might ask me how my day at work was, and I might go, it was a long day. So like this quick, like, oh, not that it's super disgusting, but it was unpleasant. And in this case, it's a little tricky because she's going from talking about how she didn't think about this to the serious thing that Princess Catherine is dealing with. So 
Is this a little bit of disappointment in the way that she, you know, didn't think about that and she should have? Or is it like that, that the princess is going through something really serious, something unpleasant, something that I don't want to think about? Now it is happening exactly when she's saying the words that she's dealing with and she's even illustrating with her head that she's dealing with. So it could really be about what she's dealing with, the poor thing, but it could also very well be like, I really shouldn't have handled this thing that she's dealing with the way that I did. So I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Well, and that diagnosis is just heart-wrenching. Yeah. I was sitting with my best friend who had breast cancer in her 30s, has two daughters, and so to watch her kind of like mm. relive her own moment it was tragic. Now, uh, when the conspiracy theories first started, I was like, we shouldn't bother. The part that got me was the way the palace handled it because when they released that photo and then all of they had to issue a kill mm -hmm. because it wasn't reliable and then another source that did get me thinking, oh my gosh, what the heck is wrong here? But I think you speak to the most important part, which is you just never know what someone's going mm -hmm. through. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm hoping now. Okay, next up is Sarah and a lot of interesting things here from a behavioral analysis standpoint. First is you'll notice in terms of movement on her face, there isn't much. Those eyebrows don't emphasize the way I would normally expect them to. And the probable reason for that is certain procedures that a lot of TV personalities get. We know what they are, but that could be limiting the movement, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter why her baseline doesn't involve a lot of movement with the eyebrows, but it doesn't. The other interesting thing about her is that she's gesturing quite a bit in this first segment, but only with one hand. Her right hand is alive and she's illustrating a lot. The left one is barely moving. Now, at some point that's gonna change and both her hands are gonna come to life. And in other clips that I've seen of her, she illustrates with both hands. But in this case, it's just the one hand. Now, whenever I see this kind of very obvious asymmetry in the illustrators, I'm not talking about one hand gesturing more than the other. I mean, one hand exclusively gesturing while the other one isn't moving. It typically suggests some kind of inner disagreement, some sort of inner conflict, right? Because half of her is, is trying to illustrate the way she normally does on television, but another side is refusing to cooperate. So going back to what I was saying before, stillness is often an indication that we don't want to draw attention to ourselves. She's trying to, you know, talk about what was going on with her, but I think there's a part of her going like, okay, I, I, I don't want this attention right now because of that knowledge of guilt. She also does something that's quite common for people who are feeling guilty or who are feeling defensive because they feel like they're being attacked, and it's where they say things that would get them a little bit of pity, even if it's through proxy. So here she starts by talking about a friend of hers and such a tragic story. I'm glad her friend is okay. That's what it seems like. It really sucks that she went through that. But she tells this story of how she was with a friend of hers who went through that and she has two daughters. So it's kind of a way for her to start off by saying like, you know, I also have a friend that this really tragic thing happened to and I was with her. So our mind goes, okay, we should go easy on her because, you know, she was with her friend and this is super tragic. So let's go a little bit more easy on her. When I see a little bit of pity seeking in moments like this, I tend to be forgiving with that. I tend to give it a second to see, is this going to evolve into a pity party? Is it going to be like, oh, poor me because this happened and poor me because that happened and there was all this pressure and all this kind of stuff. There's a point where I reach my limit. But if there's just a little bit of defensiveness by saying, you know, these things that will make us go, okay, let's back off a second. I don't hate it. I just want to see where we're going to go with this personally. And what does she follow with? Well, she says when the conspiracy theories first came out, she said, don't bother. And we see this kind of waving away gesture. But then, so now we see th this gesture going to a finger like this, which is very common for, okay, but, but wait a minute, hold on. So she goes, but then, hold on. And now we see two things. As she says that, it's the way the palace handled it. We see a head tilt and we see her look at Alyssa, who a moment ago was talking about how the way the palace handled it was a little sus. So she says that she looks at Alyssa with that head tilt. Now head tilting is a really interesting gesture. We rarely head tilt when we're feeling uncomfortable or stressed because it exposes a very vulnerable part of the body. Quite the contrary, when we're feeling stressed or protective, we tend to guard that part of the body. So very rarely, unless we're really trying to overcompensate and try to show that we're fearless, like in a fight you might see this kind of thing, like what, what, I'm not scared of you. But in most cases when we're defensive, it's rare to see head tilt. But we do see in a lot of cases, like we see it if someone's being curious about something or inquisitive, but we also see it a lot in requests for sympathy. So very often when we're requesting sympathy or even giving sympathy, like, oh, poor thing, 
we do this head tilt and expose the neck because it, it literally shows a vulnerability. Like I'm being vulnerable in this moment to try to get some empathy, some sympathy here. So she's doing this as she looks at Alyssa who shared that she also had some suspicions about you know what the palace was doing in an, in an attempt to connect on that and to say, you know, maybe I'm not that guilty. Like you, you, you see it, you connect with this thought. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm hoping now, I've always questioned the way the, the royal family handles women because whether it was Princess Diana or Fergie or Meghan Markle, I was not blaming Kate for what was going on. It really bothered me the way it was handled, whether it should have been my business or not could be debated. Um, but I do hope now just for a speedy recovery and she mm -hmm. reassured everyone she's getting the best care. Mm -hmm. And I know that it's so important for her kids to hear that, you know, she's in good hands. At this point, we're seeing two changes. One, both those hands are now illustrating. And the second is when she's driving her points home, she's trying to connect with the co-hosts and saying, you know, whether it was my business or not, she turns to Whoopi. Like, you know, I know, I know you said it's not my business. So I get you when you say that. When she's talking about the way the palace has handled women in the news up until now. She's kind of looking at her co-hosts, like trying to trying to get people on her side with these points that she's making. And now we have both hands up and illustrating. As she talks about the royal family and the way they've handled women, we see two stop gestures, so both hands coming up. So there's clearly like a big problem here with the way certain things have been done. And now she says that she wasn't blaming Kate. That's never what she did. And she's suggesting that from day one, she was more suspicious of the royal family and what they're doing, not so much Kate. Then she ends by saying that she wishes Princess Catherine a speedy recovery. So from the top, she starts by saying that when she found out the news, she was with a friend of hers who shared a similar tragic experience. Then she tries to connect with her co-hosts, a little request for sympathy. But the bulk of her message seems to be, I never said anything about Princess Catherine. My suspicion or my concern was towards the behaviors of the royal family. To be fair, what she's saying is technically correct. In that original conversation, from what I recall, she didn't say anything negative about Princess Catherine. She showed some concern, where is she? And she talked a lot about people or organizations surrounding. Princess Catherine. She took a picture. She said, listen, I photoshopped it she myself. Didn't take I it, did so it. She didn't take Whoever it. Whoever took Someone it. Someone took it of her. She, she, you know Sarah, her. Sarah, Sarah, can I, and yes. they photoshopped the photo. The palace also made a mistake here. And then they released I, two photoshopped I'm gonna, photos. We're going to go to break. No, no. And, no, where are we're you, We're going to go to break. Where are because you? So the way we feel about this response is really going to be subjective depending on how we feel towards the situation. There are some people who are going to look at it and go, no, you guys shouldn't have spread those theories. You shouldn't have talked about that. You need to apologize. That's not an apology. And then you're going to have just as many people who are going to look at it and go, no, she didn't do anything wrong. She talked about the theories that were out there, shared her own thoughts on it. And now she's just saying, that's all I did. I don't have much to apologize for. So it really subjectively depends on how you're looking at this. I will say one important thing though. Alyssa, who spoke just before her, also never said anything negative, at least in that episode, about Princess Catherine. She also did exactly what Sarah was doing and talk about the theories and all that stuff. However, in this episode, she took a lot more accountability and apologized for even talking about those theories and saying that, you know, we didn't think about what she could be going through, it's very personal, and it was none of our business. And she did say that she felt awful about it and very strongly talked about how they shouldn't have done that and Whoopi was right. So at the very least, it seems like Alyssa does see this a lot more as something that they shouldn't have done than Sarah. Sarah seems to be a little bit more defensive about it and saying, hey, look, I didn't say anything bad about her. I was just talking about some theories that were out there and she kind of seems to be justifying it a little bit more. Well, for me, it was a, a, a learning moment, a teachable moment and the lesson I learned was when Whoopi Goldberg tells me to mind my own damn business, I will mind my own damn business uh, from now on. Um, look, I, you know, I barely ever know what's going on in pop culture, so I, it, it was very strange for me, Joy too, to fall down this rabbit hole, but it was everywhere, right? There was an international frenzy. You couldn't avoid it. It was actually in reputable news outlets, not just the tabloids. It was in the New York Times, it was on CNN, it was everywhere. And uh, yeah, I fell down it because I think that that altered photo opened up a can of worms and we've all learned there's a bunch of internet sleuths out there who can notice 
every uh, little thing and come up with conspiracy theories. I feel uh, bad that I fell down the rabbit hole, uh, that I, you know, fell down the speculation. We had a family chat going on. Okay, now it's Anna, and this was such a breath of fresh air for me. I felt like I had handcuffs on and they were removed because all of a sudden we're seeing those eyebrows come to life and they're really giving me clues on where the important moments are for her. So there's a really important one when she's talking about where these theories were being circulated. And she says, this was actually reputable news outlets and we see the eyebrows go up. So when we see those eyebrows come up in conversation, there's a lot of research on why this happens. I have a whole video on the research of this. I'll leave a link in the description, but it basically comes down to one of three things, either emphasis, we emphasize with the eyebrows, either surprise when we're surprised by something or some sort of social connection or social approval. Now, with social approval, usually we're looking at someone. That's out of the question, because when she does it, she's looking down as she says it. And I think it's actually both the other ones. One is emphasis. She's emphasizing that this wasn't just, you know, random tabloids or obscure websites. This was actual reputable sources, she's emphasizing that. But at the same time, it's surprising. Like, it's surprising that this made it to that scale. And we really feel that surprise and emphasis in that moment. There's also a massive shift in her blink rate. At first she's talking about how she doesn't pay much attention to pop culture and we see that stop gesture again. So this is like the, the day of stop gestures everywhere. So is that stop gesture like negation? Again, remember this is negation. So yep, nope, I don't pay attention to any of that. That's a big no. And then the moment she starts talking about how these rumors were circulating, we see her blink rate go way up. In the beginning, she's kind of blinking normally. We do see a couple of flutters and she does look down a couple of times so it kind of looks like her eyes are closing, but she has a pretty normal blink rate. The moment she starts talking about where this was circulating, all of a sudden we see that blink rate come up. So when we see blink rate randomly start to go up, this means the number of times we blink in a minute, this is normally one of two things. Either we're processing something, but that typically looks more like these flutters, like as we process information and the other cause could just simply be stress. So when we're stressed, we blink more because the eyes dry out and this tries to correct that. Remember, we're looking for spontaneously, all of a sudden blink rate going up, not someone who just naturally blinks a lot. So in this case, I absolutely do believe that it's stress because she's moving from, you know, I normally don't pay attention to that. She's even talking about how, you know, when Whoopi talks, I'm gonna listen. So all this is safe. But now as she's gonna start talking about where all these, uh, theories were circulating and what was going on and how she participated and how she feels bad. Now we're getting into the stressful stuff. And what's interesting about Anna is this. She could have just sat back and stayed out of this. She was not there when that main discussion happened, the one that they're taking all the heat for. She volunteered here the information that she had a chat going on with her family, that she indulged and she fell down the rabbit hole. We didn't really need to know that. She could have just said, guys, Whoopi was right, you guys were wrong. There's also a really quick flash of a facial expression that just happens at the perfect moment and it's a really, really good example of it, but it happens really fast. So I'm sure a lot of you caught it, but I'm curious to know how many. As she's talking about the chat that she had with her family, first of all, leading up to that, we see her hand very brisk like this as she's talking about the things that she did that she shouldn't have done. But when she said, we even had a family chat, we see it really, really quick where the left side of her mouth goes up like this and we see her kind of looking to her side like this as she talks about that family chat. And that is the universal expression of contempt. Once again, pretty much anywhere in the world, this is recognized as an expression of contempt, looking down on something or being slightly judgmental on something. And it's characterized by arising on one side of the mouth. So it could be like this or like this. And it causes a line on one side of the face, whereas disgust is both. So it's also very common with this sideways looking askance, what we call this. So this combination is very, very common with contempt and we definitely see it there. So there's a feeling of contempt about this family chat that they had, perfect in that moment. Finally, let's talk about how in the middle of that, she did talk about how, you know, it was all over the news, it was all over reputable outlets. So there is kind of this excuse making, but she kind of goes, this is why it happened but I'm not justifying it. I do feel bad that I did this. I do feel bad that we had this family chat, contempt. So listen, I'm good with this one. I'm good with Anna, especially because she wasn't originally there. She could have washed her hands of this and said, 
she was right, you guys were wrong, zip, close. But she volunteered this information. We weren't gonna know about her family chat, we couldn't have known that, but she's volunteering this and she's going, I feel bad that I fell down that hole, shouldn't have done it, and I think, yeah, she's justifying why she did it. I think she has a problem with like, why would, why would I do this? It's so not like me. So I think she's just trying to backwards justify that, but at the end she's going, yep, I did it, shouldn't have done it. So I'm, I'm, I think that was good. Yeah, same. I mean, I, I'm deeply remorseful that I allowed Sarah Haynes to drag me down the road. <laughs> People, I have receipts, we have text chains, you can actually yes. see who led you. I think I might have led, so sorry guys. <laughs> I'm deeply, you know, remorseful that Alyssa also led me down the rabbit hole because I generally don't care that much about the royals. I was very invested in, in how Meghan Markle um, uh, says she was treated and, and, and that it almost drove her um, to, you know, death by suicide. And I saw the interview that uh, uh, Prince Harry and, and Meghan had with Oprah. Um, but other than that, I've never really cared that you much. Had and then Maddie all of investigating the Brits. The photos, the photos, yeah, because the photos. I went down this crazy rabbit hole, thank you to my co host <laughs> and to myself. I have to take blame for that because I also didn't listen to Whoopi Goldberg, who told me to stop. And I didn't. <laughs> and so. Here I am. Can, can I also mention quickly that um, it's... Okay, so I actually want to start with a moment that's towards the later part of this because there's a lot of great stuff happening in that one moment that's going to help me out with other things that happened before. So it's immediately after she says that she watched the interview with Prince Harry and Meghan Markle with Oprah. And after that she says, but other than that, I didn't really care and so on and so on. So as she's saying, but other than that, we see a couple of things. First, we see that scrunching of the face again. Almost very close to the way Alyssa did it earlier, we see the eyes squint and the nose kind of crinkle like this to where it causes these two lines. So other than that. So once again, remember, this is something that is usually, it's not this big disgust, but it's usually something like unpleasant. It could also happen, like in this case, with things that we don't really care about, right? So if you tell me, you're, you're telling me something I don't really want to hear, I don't care to hear, I might go, I don't care about that, like leave me alone, I don't, I don't want to, I don't, I don't care, I don't want to hear this. So that's very well what that could be in that moment. But instantly after that, we see a shrug with both shoulders. Other than that, I didn't really care. And both shoulders go up. So typically when we see both shoulders go up, sometimes with the eyebrows, sometimes with the hands, but symmetrically, the research has shown us that this is a disengagement. It's an I don't something. Um, I don't know, I don't wanna do that, I'm not gonna do that, I don't have anything to add to this. Like you might go, yeah, I don't have anything to add to that. And in this case, she's quite literally saying, I never really cared. So very common to see a shrug with, I don't care, I don't care. So with that scrunching as well. So I do believe that in this moment, she's genuinely expressing that it was never really something that held her interest. But now let's rewind to what she's talking about before that. And she says that the part of you know, this whole thing that historically had her interest was Meghan Markle. And she says, I was invested in how Meghan Markle, and she stops dead in her tracks. And we see, we literally see signs of what we call an increased cognitive load. So when we're overthinking, when we're really trying to think of how to put something or how to formulate something, there are signs of that. One of them is verbal leaks. Um, uh, and we hear that. We hear, go, um, are we even here? in the middle. So we see, we, all, we hear her thoughts slowing down. We also see these flutters start to come up. She's staring, her eyes are fluttering. And the research on fluttering shows us that when we're processing information, when we're trying to retrieve memory or putting something into memory, we see these rapid blinks, these flutters. So she's trying to get her words. She's trying to find the words. Um, she's hesitating. And what does she come up with? She doesn't say that you know, I was interested in the way Meghan Markle was treated. She says the way Meghan Markle um, uh, says she was treated. And there's even some comfort or happiness when she finds words and goes, says she was treated. And there's like this nodding of like, I got it. I got the right words. How Meghan Markle um, uh, says she was treated and, and, and that. And I think this is the public figure mentality kicking in, right? Because there's so much controversy around that entire topic, she knows already that they're apologizing about one thing, that if she says here that, you know, I just, I was really invested in the way Meghan Markle was treated by them as a statement of fact, she knows she's gonna take a lot of heat for that. So 
she has to stop and kind of go, okay, how do I put this to where it doesn't necessarily sound like I'm 100% believing in that, but like I'm, I'm up to date on what Megan was talking about. So she goes, pause, um, says she was treated. And as she goes on, we're still seeing those verbal leaks. We're still seeing that hesitation. And then what do we see as she talks about how Meghan Markle said she had thoughts of suicide? We see a one-sided shoulder shrug. So we see her right shoulder go up like this, just the one shoulder. In his best-selling book, What Everybody Is Saying, ex-FBI interrogator and best-selling author Joe Navarro talks a lot about the one-sided shoulder shrug and talks about how Shrugs that denote an actual lack of something, I don't know, is typically both shoulders. Because we're not thinking about it, we're just shrugging. But often when there's a lack of certainty to what we're saying, we see that one shoulder come up like this. Because it's more of an illustrator that we're trying to say like, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what's going on, I'm not really sure. So we're getting this shoulder shrug as she's saying, you know, death by suicide. And again, I think this is going a little bit beyond her measuring her words to even herself not being entirely certain what to believe when it comes to that. But why the heck are we talking about Meghan Markle again? So what, how, did that, how did Meghan Markle make her way into this conversation? So th listen, when it comes to Sunny, she started off by making jokes about, you know, who brought her into this and, you know, trying to lighten the mood a little bit by blame shifting. Then she goes about how she never really cared about any of this stuff, then talks about the part of this she did care about, which is a complete redirect of subject. She's completely off the topic now. I think maybe more so than anyone up until this point. Then when she comes back to it, once again, she says that she blames her, her co-hosts. And then at the end, we get one little, one little glimmer of blame as she says, and I blame myself. But why does she blame herself? Because she didn't listen to Whoopi Goldberg when Whoopi Goldberg told her to stop. And here I am with a lip compression. So it's not so much I blame myself for, you know, indulging in this. It's not, I, I shouldn't have done that. It's not that it's, I blame myself because I didn't stop and now here I am. But where are you? What is this here I am? Well, it's this apology. So this is giving me a feeling that of all the people sitting there, Sunny is probably the one who wanted to do this apology the least because she's going, you know, a lot of redirecting and at the end she goes, and now here I am with a lip compression. So lip compression or tightness of the lips is typically when we're withholding something or there's a disagreement. So notice how somebody might say something you disagree with and you might go, mm, I'm not so sure about that. So either she's holding something, you know, she disagrees, but it's that here I am that gets me. That's what the blame is for. I should have stopped because now here I am. Now we have to apologize because I didn't stop when Whoopi Goldberg set the stop. So yeah, I think she thinks that there really isn't much to apologize about. I wouldn't be surprised to find out that she told the others like, we shouldn't apologize. Maybe we shouldn't do this, but because everyone's saying something and that's what they decide as a group, she has to say something, which can also explain why there's a lot of joking going on with her. But yeah, at the end of the day, I'm not seeing her really uh, feeling sorry about anything. And again, not that she should. You could be watching this and go, she has nothing to feel sorry about, and that's fine. I'm just saying behaviorally, I'm not seeing her actually really sincerely apologizing about anything which might be fine. Okay, so a bit of a roller coaster, right? Because we had Alyssa, who I think started off with good accountability, taking the blame herself. There's even a point there where uh, Sunny's talking and she even goes, actually, I think I'll take the blame on that. I think I'm the one who got you started. So there's a good amount of accountability there. Then we're moving on to Sarah, who seems to be trying to get a little bit of sympathy, trying to justify a little bit more, not getting too much um, apology there. Then we go to Anna, who literally just soaks herself in gasoline and lights herself on fire when she could have taken just a, a laid back perspective on this or even just kind of sat it out a little. But she's coming in and she's kind of helping her friends out by saying, hey, look, I did it too. Then we have Sunny, who's, who's redirecting and making jokes. And I just don't believe she feels that an apology is necessary here. So very different reactions. But all of these things, right in those first five seconds, there's good indication that this is where it's going. I think the only one that would have been a question mark for me in those first five seconds would have been Sarah because she wasn't giving us much, just kind of nodding to what Alyssa was saying to Alyssa beginning, which could just be understanding or agreement. So it's not very clear, but you know, in, in Sunny's kind of just zero agreement, zero movement, I think we could have seen this coming. I think in the fact that Anna, you know, first said, should have listened to, to Whoopi, and Alyssa, who kind of started 
you know, went right in first. I think we could have seen where that was going. But let me know what you think. And once again, please, 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 let's keep the discussion about this video and these behaviors because there's a lot to talk about just in this and this analysis is not about Princess Catherine's video. So let's please not go into that and bring in those theories and try to be completely stuck in bias to try to justify everything you're doing through that lens. Really not interested in that. I would love to have some open discussions about the behaviors we're seeing here about these women who decided as a collective that they were wrong for doing that. So again, we're not debating that part. They decided that, now they're talking about it. What behaviors are we seeing here? Let me know in the comments and I will see you on the next one.